So um, I'm not sure if you saw the post we put up on the island with the questions we had. But, uh, uh, no, I didn't see that. I saw okay. you. Yeah. Yep, yep. So, I mean, basically, we're trying to do the extraction for the EM simulation. And um, yeah. we're running into a couple of issues. I think you can see it here. Some of the components just aren't going into the extraction. And it's throwing a bunch of errors. And um, I think the issue might be that you got those little crosses here and you got you got a few of them in different spots even though we've got things completely uh butted up to each other and snapped together we're still getting those issues so and yeah we've tried a bunch of different things and haven't been able to figure it out and i ran this um this uh what is it the connectivity check tool and it's telling me that basically like these three components here just aren't connected which is why they're not coming up and it's saying that there's some detached face on this capacitor here and I've tried editing the shape and properties and stuff like that and haven't had any luck. So, yeah. Hmm. Okay, so this is your schematic, right? The one here, yeah, I'll request. Uh... So that's your schematic, right? Yeah, that's the schematic up there. So you can uh, simulate just the induct itself, right? That's fine. Oh, okay. So um, even if we don't have the transmission lines, as long as we just have the inductors and capacitors, would that be okay? Or... I don't know. I mean, I mean, have you tried just, just simulating? We, yeah, so we, we've tried. We can, so if we take out, like, basically this transmission, like this part here, this part here, and this part here, then I think it gets rid of all the errors and we can simulate it. So that does kind of work, but mm. yeah, the problem is for the... Um, like we have similar issues with the other matching circuits as well and the other matching circuits are a lot bigger than this one so that's why i was trying to yeah figure out what why it's coming up with those crosses and stuff it's yeah. weird if you leave out some of the transmission lines and some of the um t junctions that works but if you as soon as you try and add an md extraction we get these errors yeah so you yeah so that's your input yeah. Yeah, I've had to rotate the T piece around there just to get it to go together properly. Um, but I don't. Th it, that shouldn't cause any issues, should it? If I swap the uh, the connections on like a T piece or something like that. Mm. No, it shouldn't. This I'm just looking. So these are issues with the extractions. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we'll try to do a simple one, like maybe do this part first. Yeah, okay. Um, do you want me to disable the other ones? I know we'll create another scheme, Eric, I think. Okay. Uh, so when you create it, okay, okay, I see I see the problem. When you create the scheme, Eric, you have to pick this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we've been picking that one uh, when we've been doing it, but I mean, there is a chance I haven't, but I'm pretty sure when I've seen that come up, I've okay. selected the page. Uh, and, you know, so let's it. say.
I just had a thought actually. Uh, is it possible that the reason it's not snapping together is because it's kind of locked onto like whatever like the smallest unit size is for like the layout and like I've got like a weird size for the capacitor? Uh, it's, it's possible. That could be one possibility. But even though if it's not, uh, you know, snapping together, that is still okay. I mean, doesn't as long as it's it's overlapping, that should be fine for you. Yeah. For example, like see this here. Is, as long as there's no gap, see they, uh, there's a gap, right? So that's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you disable the uh, the like the locking to grid? Hmm. So one other thing you can do is you can you know, move this and then and then press uh, I think control and then ah uh, yeah that's a squid problem yes exactly I'll just do this for now because it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, also, I noticed you can select the substrate like metal one, metal two, or thick that it's using. Uh, would that impact this kind of thing at all? Or yeah, it will have an impact because you see that metal two here. This is metal two, uh -huh. the, the capacitor. So this is in the layout. So let's let's extract and then we can probably see it clearly. Oh yeah. yeah I think yeah, I think what what okay, I see the reason why it's not stepping, you'll have to do it probably in the EM. Uh, so I will go back to that. So in here. If I press cross control and it will actually go and oh. yeah, it doesn't, right? Yeah, okay. So in here, what you should do is maybe we can, this is much smaller than micrometers, I think the stepping issue. Okay, let, let's do this one anyway first. Yeah, it doesn't look like any of the errors uh, came up when you extracted that one. So I think it worked that time. So now we'll try to build up a little bit more. Give me a second, I just have to forward something. Yeah, that's cool. Were those errors, they weren't from that, that extraction, were they? No, nah, they were from the extraction before. Uh, the one I was trying to do, yeah. Well, I have been creating sub circuits like this, but I haven't been adding the extraction in them. I didn't. Okay, maybe that was it. So I'm going to add a few more items. Yeah. Right.
Yeah, I'll, uh, there's a mesh issue, but we will sort that out separately. So we. Did that, did that just add them without an error? I think so. I would have expected it to open it up after it was done. Yeah, me too. I would add them up too. It didn't, but it seems like it has it has done it without a problem. So maybe you had the LPF wrong. Okay. Well, we hopefully I'll... Sorry. I'll the other LPF, when you make the schematic, it asks you to select which LPF you want to use. Um, yeah. The other thing, in terms of getting your know, snap to grid, okay? So, uh, okay, I think what you should do here is, you know, this. the problem is, this is the problem, this, these numbers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you do 55, it doesn't make a big difference. So, just do 55 and then, you know, sorry, 8 it wouldn't make a big difference in your values. Yeah, it's just because we ran the optimizer to try and tune it, which is why it's kind yeah. of given it some strange values, but yeah. So when you do this, you'll see it will snap properly and then that's much easier. Yeah, and you said there was another issue with a mesh or something like that? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think it's uh, mesh size. Uh, I thought initially it was the mesh size, but now let's, let's do this again. Um, If I go back to the hey, it worked. Yeah. Yes. Oh, good. Oh. yeah. Absolute so, legend. Yes. Yeah. That's so awesome. that is the the slight because normally when we do the designs, we we don't really do like you know point one, point two. So we just do you know. It does make a tad difference, so it's it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think you're in the right direction. That should be fine. I, I guess you can just clear up, and then if you get trouble, let me know. Yep. But uh, from I think after tomorrow, after tomorrow morning, I won't have my PC because I have to hand it over. Okay. But send it to David. He's he's probably have like ten ways to solve this, so because he <laughs> knows it much better than me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he will also do a Zoom session if he, if he needs to. Mm. Okay, cool. Um, we do have a few more questions if, uh, if you've got time that we can yeah, ask yeah. right now. Okay. Yeah. Wait, so, so do you reckon that's fixed now? Um, like the EM error when we're trying to extract a component? Yeah, because I think because it wasn't snapping together, it was that's why it was coming up with like, oh, these components aren't here because they're not actually connected to it, so it wasn't extracting it properly. So we'll, we'll give it a try and we'll see if that works. Um, Okay. I have, yeah, I have the questions up that we put on iLearn. Um, but yeah, the first one was basically, there was like a mark for layout considerations. And I was just wondering, is that um, basically trying to design the layout to fit inside that frame? Is that what that mark is for? Or what, is, what does that really mean? Yes, yes. Trying to see if... That, so you don't have to put the layout completely without within the frame in the review three. But you should at least consider, like you need to show in your presentation. Uh, okay, I've, I've tried to, you know, cons so, so say for example, if you have this, uh, this loop, the spiral. Yeah. Uh, and then it has a weird shape and it goes to the left. And then when you want to connect your other uh, capacitors, you go out from the frame. So obviously you can't have the out, like two ports of the spiral as it is, so you have yeah, to change yeah. the location, so things like that. Okay, um, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, uh, so yeah, the next question was, with the RF pads, are we able to move them around the frame or do they have to be, so like, I'd assume that they have to be on the left and right hand side, but yeah. I noticed someone posted a picture where they slid one of them kind of down and the other one kind of up. That's fine. Oh, that's fine, okay. 
Uh, yeah, the other, next question was, you mentioned in the last review, 945 mil uh, each way. Is that like the absolute max size that we can go to for, okay. Yeah. yeah. So the frame size is 945 by 945. Uh, but the, the problem is, so the, sorry, uh, the frame, then you still need to have about 10 micrometer or 12 micrometer gap from the edge of that frame to your circuit. So yep. you still have, you'll have a little bit less uh, real estate. So, yep. so we can't extend it a little bit because I've managed to fit everything inside the frame, but it's like 996 by 1060 or something. Yeah, so that's, that's a problem. So you need to sort of try to, you know, play 